black, black on black, black my face so black, black, black on black, my skin is so black, I'm black and I'm black on black, it's black. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you are having a great day. And if you're not, you will now because you're looking at my beautiful face. Anyways, today I will be presenting part three of my critically acclaimed series, if I do say so myself, the top black superheroes list. If this is your first time here, don't forget to watch both part one and part two. You can do this after watching this one as there's no specific order. And whilst you're doing that, press the subscribe button so you can be notified every single time I upload. Like part two of this series, I will include some special guests, nine to be exact. And this is because I not only want to shed light on black superheroes, but also some black creatives. Because I like to support my brothers and sisters out there. The links to their channels will be down in the description below. And there will be some cards on screen when their segment starts. Anyways, I think this video is going to be long enough. So let's start. This is the Caramel Drizzle TV's top 10 black superheroes, part three. At number 10, we have Jinx, who's going to tell you about the black She-Hulk frenzy. Take it from here. Bow. It's Jinx again, and we're back again to another Caramel Drizzle TV black superheroes edition. Now today I'm gonna do Frenzy. Now Frenzy's real name is Joanna Cargill. And she is part of the Marvel Universe and her first appearance is in The X Factor, issue number four in May 1986. So she grew up with an abusive soldier father who kind of favored his son over his daughter and always lashed out at Frenzy, Joanna. And it got to a point where his son died. So now he became more angry and lashed out at her even more. And she tried to defend herself and ended up awakening her mutant powers because her dad was getting loud into her face. And then she kind of ended up punching a hole through him and killed him. So she ran away from that. She then goes on to become a mercenary by the name of Frenzy. So Joanna becomes Frenzy with her newly awakened mutant powers. And she comes head to head against Gambit in one mission and if you know Gambit, he's the guy with the cards in uh, the X-Men. He has cards, he's got like psychokinesis and all that crazy stuff. She's angered by all humans because she witnesses Magneto getting put in chains. And then she joins Apocalypse and Sabad Noor, the morning light. You know, Batman thing. <laughs> so she joins Apocalypse and then Apocalypse puts her in a group with a few other people and they form the Alliance of Evil, which is the group she's in. And then she does a couple of missions in that here and there. Her first order from Apocalypse was to uh, capture Rusty Collins, Fire Fist. If you know Fire Fist and you're a comic lover. Yeah. And um, her plan is foiled by X-Factor into a heated battle and then she fled from feeling overwhelmed. So let's talk about her powers. So her powers include superhuman strength, superhuman stamina, and superhuman durability alongside agility and reflexes. So she's just superhuman everything. Essentially, she's an overpowered normal human being with an extra reinforced durability of tissues. And essentially, her strongest power point, like her strongest stat, it's a durability, like it's just way higher than everything else. Hit her, she wake right up. So that, that is simply what we're gonna do on a frenzy. Joanna Cargill. You guys wanna know more about Joanna? You gotta, you gotta tap into the comics because she is the super girl, like the superhuman, the black one, the one that walks, runs, hits. She an OG. Remember. Thank you so much for telling us about her. Frenzy is such an underrated character. I called her the Black She-Hulk for a reason. She is incredibly strong and I hope to see her on the big screen in the future. At number nine, we have Esther, who is going to tell us about Power Girl. Hi guys, it's Esther. I'm back again and this time I'll be talking about Power Girl. Tanya Spears is the second person to use the name Power Girl. She first appeared in the world's finest issue 23 in 2014. Tanya was an intern at Star Laboratories and was known as the world's smartest 17-year-old. Power Girl and Huntress were both stranded on Prime Earth, 
Tanya was tasked with the mission of helping the Huntress and Power Girl get back to Earth 2. Once the two heroes returned to their reality, Tanya suddenly exhibited superhuman powers. This was presumably caused by the portal that transported both Power Girl and the Huntress. To deal with her powers, she joined the Teen Titans, and once they disbanded, she was recruited by Deathstroke for his team, the Defiance. Like the original Power Girl, Tanya has superhuman strength, invulnerability, reflexes, and she can fly. Tanya was also gifted the ability to alter her size to that of a giant, and when she grows, she can heal any damage taken. Being that Tanya is incredibly smart, she's a perfect mix of brain and brawn. Esther said it perfectly. She is the perfect mix of brain and brawn. I really enjoyed her dynamic on the Teen Titans, especially with Robin. As prior to her appearance, he was kind of viewed as the smart one on the team. It was cool to see someone humble his status a bit. Next, Yao will be talking about the eighth hero on this list, Steel. Hi, my name is Yao, and I'm going to be talking about a superhero known as Steel. A couple of superheroes have donned the mantle of Steel, but the most recent is John Henry Irons. He made his first appearance in the adventures of Superman, issue 500 in 1993. He was a steel worker in Metropolis, who Superman saved during an accident where he nearly fell to his death. Not long after this, the man of steel was killed by a doomsday. Inspired by the fallen hero, John decided to create his own suit and patrol the city during Superman's absence. When Superman returned from the dead, Steel was accepted into the super family and he has been a res respectable member ever since. Steel possesses no powers. But he's a genius level scientist and engineer. He uses his skills to create steel armor. This armor enhances his strength and durability. He also has a level of energy resistance and is also equipped with some jet boots. Steel also wields a kinetic hammer, which can absorb kinetic energy as well as release it at will. The hammer can fly again by itself and it can tune itself to the Earth's magnetic field, making it impossible to move, which is so it's basically Mjolnir. I have a lot of respect for Steel since he is the only main member of the Superman family that's powerless. This is a big deal because the Superman family is one of the strongest unions in comics, period. Don't sleep on Steel, but maybe avoid the 1997 movie starring Shaquille O'Neal. Um, it's quite bad. At number seven, Chantal from Sham and Shan TV is going to tell us just who Kid Quantum is. Hey guys, my name is Chantel and today I'll be talking about Kate Quantum. Jasmine Cullen is the third person to use the name Kate Quantum. She is part of the Legion of Superheroes. Her first appearance was in Legion of Superheroes Volume 4, Issue 82. The second Kate Quantum was her brother James. After his tragic death, Jasmine opted to become his successor. Not wanting to suffer the same fate as her brother, she underwent surgery to augment her power to a level where there were no restrictions. Jasmine went on to join the Legion of Superheroes and was soon elevated to team leader, which is a very big deal considering how many members are on the team. Jasmine is able to create stasis field and within that field, she is able to control and manipulate time. This means she can slow down or accelerate anything within that field. She is also a skilled fighter and tactician and like all legionaries, she is equipped with a flat ring which allows her to levitate. Thank you Chantel. I think Kid Quantum is another underrated character. Having the ability to control time is quite an overpowered power. Make sure to check out the Legion of Superheroes if you want to find out more about her. At number 6 we have Ant and Christabel will tell you about her. Hi, I'm Christabel and I'm talking about Ant. Hannah Washington is the Image Comics superhero Ant. She made her first appearance in Ant issue 1 in 2004. When we're first introduced to Hannah, she's an eight-year-old girl who's repeatedly bullied and tormented at school. And with her father hardly being around to take care of her, she becomes increasingly lonely and depressed. In order to escape the harsh realities of life, she creates an imaginary superhero persona known as Ant. It is soon revealed that this imaginary hero is actually her. In fact, Hannah is a mentally unstable adult. She uses the thoughts of herself as a child as a coping mechanism. Hannah wears the ant armor when she fights crime. It is fueled by her blood sugar. Her armor grants her superhuman strength, speed, senses and agility, and she can use her antenna as a bladed whip. Image Comics characters definitely deserve more love. Trust me, there is a whole world of superheroes outside Marvel and DC, and they're equally as cool. There is one more Image Comics character on this list, 
and David will talk about him. This is the fifth hero. Stealth. Stealth is an image comics character who first appeared in Stealth issue 1 in 2020. Being that he's a relatively new character, not much is known about him. But he has a lot of potential, which is why he's made it to this list. Stealth is the superhero persona of James Carey, who is at present an elderly man who suffers from Alzheimer's disease. He came into possession of a seemingly extraterrestrial suit in his younger years and has used it to fight crime in his home city. This suit gives him the ability to fly as well as extra strength, well, superhuman strength. I wonder if he was quarantining or if he was using his stealth abilities in 2020 to get around. I think this will be such a great concept for a movie. Studios, let's have some elderly representation, please. Now, Alpha Kings 123 will tell you about how great the fourth hero on this list is. And that's Vixen. What's going on, beautiful people? It is a guy with the amazing name, aka Alpha Kings 123, and welcome, fam. I just want to say thank you to Caramel Drizzle for allowing me to come back, give y'all a little bit more information. You dig what I'm saying? So today, we're going to be chatting about Vixen. Ooh, she fire, right? Mary McCabe, a Zambisi born American woman who's both a businesswoman and a model. She fights crime as Vixen using the Tantu Totem. Vixen made her very first appearance in Action Comics 521 in 1981. I'm looking over here because I had to make sure that my information was correct. Yiddy! Now comes the part that you're all waiting for, her abilities. Now, with the power of the Tantu Totem, she is able to replicate the powers and characteristics of animals. Okay, so if she touches the totem and says, hmm, I want to smack you like a gorilla would, she will get gorilla strength. So with that totem, it allows her a lot of abilities that are only available within the animal kingdom. Now, obviously with you using this totem, her one weakness is that she can now experience animal-like behavior. So if she's channeling an animal that is quite ferocious or whatever, she herself might become ferocious and might lose herself. You dig what I'm saying? But I don't mind that. <laughs> Yeah, man, that now concludes everything that I had to say, okay? But again, thank you so much to Caramel Drizzle, man, and you guys enjoy the rest of the video. Peace. Bow. Vixen is basically a cooler version of Beast Boy. I mean, she's not green. And she has the same abilities. She just doesn't transform. There have been a few renditions of her in live action, but I recommend watching her cartoon series, which is really good. Third on this list is the second Black Green Lantern, and my good friend Valerie will introduce you to her. Hi guys, Valerie here. So today I'll be talking about Joe Mullen from Green Lantern. Joe Mullen is the eighth human Green Lantern. She first appeared in Far Sector issue one in 2020. She was a police officer on earth and was fired for fighting against police brutality. Unbelievable earth. Depressed and unemployed, she was then approached by a guardian of the universe who had noticed her previous acts of bravery. The guardian offered Joe a chance to become a hero of justice a green lantern she accepted promptly and became the guardian of the alien realm for sector being that joe is part of the green lantern corp she is in possession of the green lantern ring the ring allows her to create energy constructions she can literally make anything at will her only limitation is her imagination Amazing. The ring allows her to create force field energy blasts and she can also fly. So yes, she's the best. She's amazing. Support her. Yes. Thank you, Valerie. Far Sector is a great read. And since Joe is a very recent character, she is probably the most accessible superhero to get into. On this list at least. At number two we have Monet Saint Croix. The black supergirl and i have molina here to tell you about her okay monet saint Croix, also known as m is a mutant hailing from the marvel universe she made her first appearance in generation x issue one in 1994. monet was the second child of an albanian princess and a moroccan businessman she was also their favorite child this made her older brother increasingly jealous and when his mutant powers activated, he transformed Monet into a mute creature with red skin and razor sharp hands called Penance. It was in the form that she was recruited by Emma Frost to join the newly formed Generation X team. 
After some time in this state, she was finally able to gain her original body back. Monet then took on the name M and has operated as a hero ever since. She's been a part of most of the X-Men teams, including X-Force and X-Factor investigations. She occasionally fights alone. Monet has a multitude of powers. She has even been called the perfect mutant. She has super strength, speed, agility, invulnerability, telekinesis, enhanced senses, she has minimal te uh, telepathic abilities and she has a healing factor on par with Sabretooth. Although Monet has a range of powers, she doesn't specifically excel at any. You could say she's a jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> Monet is also a genius intellect. She has formidable hand-to-hand -hand combat and she can speak English and French fluently. Monet can also fuse with her younger siblings, which grants her other abilities. Monet is also a proud Muslim. This character has been subjected to a lot of controversy because despite her being recognized as darker complexes in the Marvel Universe, her skin color was increasingly changed over the years. This was her when she was introduced. And this is her now. Yeah. It is very common for darker complexed characters' skin tones to be altered over time. She looks silver in the second version. Silver. She's almost unrecognizable. Many people have claimed this was the result of artistic direction, but I don't buy it. Artistic direction does not mean change a character's identity. Apart from this, Monet is a great character and you should definitely check her out. And now we're down to number one, and I'll be talking about Victor Alvarez, the second Power Man. He made his first appearance in Dark Reign, The List, Daredevil, Issue 1. He is Afro-Latino and is the son of the former villain, Shade. Okay, so Victor received his powers when he was caught in an explosion caused by the supervillain Bullseye, which essentially destroyed a full block of flats. Victor was the only survivor, and he was only able to survive by drawing upon the chi energy from the people around him who didn't survive the attack. This resulted in him being able to utilize chi energy in the same manner as the Iron Fist. Like the original Power Man, Victor started out his hero journey by becoming a hero for hire. He soon encountered both Luke Cage, the original Power Man, and the Iron Fist. With the latter taking interest in him, the two became the new Iron Fist and Power Man duo. He later went on to enroll in the Avengers Academy, which he graduated from. Victor has also been involved in many teams, including the Mighty Avengers, the Champions, Heroes for Hire, and the New Avengers. Victor has the ability to absorb Chi. Chi is another way of saying life energy. By absorbing chi from his surroundings, Victor is able to enhance his strength, speed, agility and durability to superhuman levels. At one time, he absorbed so much chi that he was able to grow 10 times his own size. And he can also use chi to heal himself. Victor has also shown the ability to empower others with chi. And if he absorbs chi from someone else, he can absorb their knowledge and experiences. And being that he was trained by Iron Fist, who is one of the most skilled martial artists in Marvel, Victor is an extremely competent fighter. And lastly, although his name shares a resemblance to Power Girls, they are not related at all. Power Girl is a DC Comics character, whilst Power Man is owned by Marvel. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much, and a massive thank you to everyone who got involved organizing these collabs aren't easy but everyone came through don't forget to check out their youtube channels if they have one the links will be in the description below thank you so much for watching don't forget to like share subscribe there will be videos on this channel every single friday say less god bless